So how do we use truth tables to prove um, the validity of some arguments? Well, um, let's begin with some notational points. Um, here, what I've written is um, two distinct ways of sort of presenting what we'll be up to, and I'll just say a little bit about this. So you might be asked, for example, to show that Q here follows from, or is a logical consequence of these two formulas right here of P and if P then Q. So we can see that um, I hope that Q follows from P and if P then Q. This symbol right here, this guy, is a um, it's a little turnstile. We call it the turnstile. And strictly speaking, it has to do with deducibility within a system. So um, sort of like entailment, um, we're going to be a little bit sloppy about, um, about our terms here, but it doesn't really matter for these purposes. But um, you know, strictly speaking, it has to do with the deducibility of Q that Q is deducible from these two propositions or these two sentences um, in some system, but we'll, we'll ignore the, the fine points of that for now. Um, so P, if P then Q, the logical consequence, or one logical consequence is Q. Okay, so, um, and we're gonna be asked you know, to show that this is the case. Okay, so another way that sometimes these things are presented uh, looks something like this. Below, you'll see something like this, which is a sort of a therefore symbol. Um, here you've got a line separating the premises from the conclusion. Okay, so Q is the conclusion, and these two things are the premises, P and if P then Q, those are the premises. And um, so these are basically, you know, they're kind of like the way we'd set up the problems. So you see something like that, or maybe you'd see something like that, um, and you'd be asked to prove that or to show that. So prove, these guys or show these guys to be valid okay so when we're thinking about validity remember what what did we mean or what what did we understand a valid argument to look like well so a valid argument is one where the premises if the premises are true then the conclusion has to be true so let's explore this has to be business a little bit and um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say for example that over here Given everything on the left side of the turnstile, it has to be the case that this follows, right? Or that this is true. So given that everything on the left side of the turnstile is true, then the stuff on the right side has to be true. Okay, another way to think about this would be, well, let's take our other example. If you have P, and if you have P then Q, then Q follows logically. Q has to be true. So if these two things are true up here, then this has to be true. Okay, so notice there I said if dot dot dot. That's supposed to be an if. Then I'm going to do something a little bit sloppy, but it's all right, and say we could imagine taking something like this and converting it into a single sentence.
Okay, so here's the sentence. Here's the problem. Or here's what we have to, to show. We have to show, sometimes we'll say that this is a theorem, the conclusion or the theorem, given these premises. So we're going to take all of this stuff and treat it as a single formula. This is a little bit sloppy, but it's going to help you, I think, understand what we're doing here with the truth tables. And what we have then is P. P. Here's our premise, our first premise. And the second premise. Therefore, Q. So let's take a look at that. We're going to say, if you have this, then you have this. So if this stuff and this stuff, therefore, or then, the conclusion follows. Okay, so what I've basically done is converted our um, problem into a conditional. So why did, why did I do that? Well, I did that because now what are we going to say about this, um, this little conditional? Well, we're going to say that if it's the case that Q follows from P and if P then Q, then this whole statement here, down here, this statement will be a tautology. So let's remember again what a tautology is. A tautology is a statement that's true under all possible circumstances by virtue of its form. Once again, a tautology is a statement that's true under all situations, in all possible worlds, in all scenarios, by virtue of the form of that statement. A valid argument, remember, is such that if the premises are true, then the conclusion is true, without exception no counterexamples. So turning the problem then into this kind of conditional statement allows us to run the truth table, checking for the values falling under the MLO here, which will be the horseshoe, the implication. And if it ends up that we get all trues here, then what we're going to say is that the sentence as a whole is a tautology and we will conclude that this whole thing is valid. Okay, so it's a little bit roundabout, but I hope you get the general gist of that. You might want to review that and look at what we have in the text as well. So let's keep going. So that, then let's go ahead and do it. So here I've set up my um, my table so that I can fill in the parts of the truth table. Um, we begin, of course, with our conventional orderings of P's and Q's. Um, so I take the first instance of P here and I'll run the truth table. TTFF, we're used to this. And if you go online or if you look at other logic books, you'll see different ways of setting up the truth table and and there's, there are good reasons for the, the usual alternative to what I'm doing here. But um, I think just for the sake of learning this, it's probably easier if you, if you do it this way. So you, first you set up the conventional ordering. So you've got your P here, you've got your Q here. Of course, notice you also have this one and this one. So let's go ahead and also include their truth tables. Of course, we want to be consistent. So 
if P is TTFF, then it's going to be TTFF throughout. If Q is TFTF, it's going to be TFTF throughout. Let's go ahead and do that. So now let's start evaluating. So we're going to look to the uh, parentheses to indicate the order of operation here. So here's our outermost pair of parentheses. Here's the MLO. And if we look inside here, then this would be the next operator. And then finally, this is the, the most basic of the operators or the sort of the tertiary logical operator. So this is the main logical operator, the secondary logical operator, the tertiary logical operator. That's just terminology I made up. But basically, you want to say that the first one you're going to evaluate would be the lowest here, right? This guy here. Then the next one would be the one that joins that to this. So this would be number two. And then finally, number three would be the one to capture the value for the sentence as a whole, for the formula as a whole. I hope you can see that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start evaluating. So we would start then with this basic one right here. Whoops, with this basic one right here. To get this value, the value of this part. Then we'd go ahead and we'd do the next one to get the value of this whole section. And then finally, we'd get the horseshoe. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. You get the idea. So the first thing I did is evaluate the horseshoe. <coughs> so the value of the horseshoe is straightforward. If you have if P then Q, where it's TTFF and TFTF, TTFF, TFTF, how did I get those? Again, those are conventional orderings. I know that the implication or the horseshoe is only false when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So I can just scan. I know that um, that'll be the only case where it's false. So then it, uh, in all other cases, it'll be true. So true, false, true, true, as usual. That's the value for this inside part here. So this part as a whole, its value is, I should have not included that parenthesis here, but let's, so, okay, there we go. Something like that. The value of this part in here is TFTF, or sorry, TFTT. And so now, we're going to use the AND function here. So this is AND, the conjunction. And we're going to take the T here and the T here. Check out the result. We know that AND takes two values. If And if both values are true, then it gives a true. If they're not, then it gives a false. So here's a T, here's an F. Remember, we don't need to worry about these guys anymore, right? So we could just scratch them out even. So don't worry about them anymore. So we've got a false here. We know it's going to be false. And we know it's going to be false here. So we've got TFFF. And then that'll be the value of all of this. So let's go ahead and do that. So now remember, we can ignore. So we can ignore, for example, that, that. that, 
this here was the value of the inside part right here. But now we can ignore it because what we did is we compared this and this. We took these two value, two sets of values and we ran them through the and, the conjunction operator, and this was our outcome. So now this here in the circle is the value of all of this. And then finally we can just run our implication operator, the, con the horseshoe, and what we'll do is we will compare the value of everything on the inside, those parentheses, TFFF, and TFTF. See what happens when we join these two together. with the implication operator. So we know that the horseshoe is false only when the antecedent of the conditional is true and the consequence is false. And do we have that scenario here? No, we don't. So we've got T antecedent true, consequent true, so that's a true. Antecedent false, consequent false, it's true. False, antecedent, true, consequent, true. And false, antecedent, false, consequent, it's true. So what we have here is the proof that the value that this entire, the value of this entire statement is true under all possible scenarios. So there's no possible configuration of truth values here such that this statement as a whole comes out false. So here we have them all lined up. That's probably not very helpful. Here's the final value. It's the value of the statement as a whole. So now we know then that this is um, our earlier, let's go back, that our earlier claim here is valid. Okay, so we know that this is valid. Why? Well, because there's no circumstances in which if you have this stuff to the left of the turnstile, you won't get the stuff to the right of the turnstile. Everything and under any circumstances, the stuff at the right follows from the stuff at the left. And we showed that with the truth table. Okay. Good, so do some more examples and uh, that'll do for now.